Well, hello there. Do you know what I find interesting? No? Short-lived states. There are many examples. And in this video, we're going to discuss the short-lived Tsar Protectorate. It was a protectorate that was set up by the French with its goal to annex the area into France. But that did not happen. How did this protectorate come to be? And how did it come to an end? That is what you will learn in this video about the short-lived Tsar Protectorate. Keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher. I make videos about history for you. And if you find it interesting, well, what are you waiting for? Subscribe if you have not already. And also hit that notification bell. And I'm now here in the German city of Saarbrücken. The Saarland was under Allied occupation after the First World War from 1920 till 1935. It was under League of Nations mandate and known as the territory of the Tsar Basin. In 1935, a referendum was held on its territorial status. People could opt for reunification with Germany, the status quo, or unification with France. An overwhelming majority, 90%, chose to reunify with Germany. One-tenth chose for the status quo and not even one percent for unification with France. On the 1st of March 1935, the reunion with Germany was authorized. When World War II in Europe was over, Germany was divided by the victorious allies. Some German territories disappeared from the map. East Prussia was carved up by the Soviets and the Poles. Furthermore, Poland got Pomerania and Silesia. The German eastern border would now be at the oder neisse line. The Poles on their turn lost the former eastern territories for good. The remaining part of Germany was divided by the Soviets, which later would become the GDR and the Western Allies, the US, Great Britain and France. At first, the French weren't allowed to occupy Germany, yet. The French First Army also helped with the conquest of the west of the country. Therefore, they gained control of barely two contiguous areas, Rheinland-Pfalz, South Baden and Württemberg, Hohenzollern. The French actually got assistance from Luxembourg, which army controlled a small territory of Bildburg and Saarburg. So what about the Tsar region? In July 1945, the US troops left the region and the French moved in. Now early 1946, the French disentangled the Tsar area from the rest of the Allied occupation zone. And therefore, the Tsar protectorate became a separate protectorate, which was no longer governed by the Allied Control Council for Germany. I read that the French deported around 2,000 people from the Tsar area. Most likely these were Nazi officials. And since the French had no input in the Potsdam Agreement, they refused to receive the expelled people from the annexed Eastern territories. Now victims of Nazi imposed expulsions, think of political refugees, and Jews, they were allowed to return. And the French, they hoped they could annex the Tsar region one day. Why was that? Mostly because of economic reasons, because the area was rich in coal mines. In early years, the borders shifted a little bit. Mid-1946, over 100 municipalities were added to the Tsar Protectorate. The next year, 61 municipalities returned to Germany to the new state of rheinland palatinate in a speech given in Stuttgart in September 1946, the U.S. Secretary of State, James F. Barnes, stated, The United States does not feel that it can deny to France, which has been invaded three times by Germany in 70 years, its claims to the Tsar territory, whose economy has long been closely linked with France. Of course, if the Tsar territory is integrated with France, she should readjust her reparation claims against Germany. At first, a policy of industrial disarmament was pursued just like in the Ruhr area, which was later reversed. In 1947, the Tsar mark replaced the Ort Reichsmark as currency. Yet, the same year, the French franc currency was introduced in the region. Near the end of that year, a constitution was constituted. In 1948, the custom union with France came into effect. And in the following years, the French did try to seize control over the German industries in the region. Yet, the policy of neutralizing Germany transformed into a policy of European integration. In 1950, the Schuman Agreement was signed. The Schuman Declaration in 1950 was the first attempt on creating a European coal and steel community, the ECSC. And within this community, 
the French and the West Germans, they had to play a leading part. And therefore, it seemed more likely that the Tsarland would return to Germany. Yet, the French did try to delay the return of the Tsarland to Germany by intensifying the economic control of the region. In 1954, the French they tried to create an independent Tsarland. This was not favorable according to a plebiscite where only one third of the voters voted in favor and two thirds against. In 1956, the Tsar Treaty established that Tsarland should be allowed to join West Germany. This plebiscite proved that the inhabitants of the Tsarland wanted to belong to Germany and thus this region was integrated in West Germany. And this officially happened on the 1st of January 1957. The franc remained the currency till July 19. 59. I hope you found this video interesting. If you do so, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like to learn about other short lived states, you can click right here. Thank you for watching and best wishes. And auf Wiedersehen from Saarbrücken in Germany.